Okay, so the next part of this chapter is loans. And of course, we all are used to loans <laughs> and borrowing money. So the loan um, formula is for when you take out a loan. And in the end of this uh, chapter, you'll have a project of personal finance where you make a purchase and get a loan. So this section will be really important for you when you complete your project. Now, what's nice about the loan formula, it is the same as the payout annuity formula, except now we're going to make payments and take out a loan. So we're gonna have this initial amount that we're gonna borrow from the bank, and we're gonna have you know any sort of time um, time period payments. Now, since we're trying to do be more realistic in, in real life, we usually we make monthly payments, right, on our mortgage or our car loan, um, student loans, it's usually credit cards, it's usually just all monthly. So most likely we're always going to use 12 months per year unless it's specified differently. So if we go ahead and just take a look here at um, the loan formula, you'll see that it is the same as the payout annuity formula. And the only difference is what the variables represent, right? So here, the variable D represent payments. And it's going to be many payments. And P sub 0 will be the initial amount of the loan. Um, R will still be the interest rate. K is the number of compounding periods in a year. And usually with loans, we do monthly, like 12 times a year. And N is the length of the loan. OK, so how do we know? Now we have like simple interest, compound interest, annuity, payout annuity, loans. Let's put it all together. So compound interest is one deposit and interest over time. And then annuity is many deposits, right? Not just one deposit, many deposits. Payout and annuity is many withdrawals. And loans are many payments. And what's nice about the payout annuities and loans, it'll be the same formula. OK, so when going through these problems, you're always going to ask yourself, is it one deposit, many deposits, many withdrawals, many payments? OK, so Race Car Rita can afford a monthly car payment of $250. After some research, Race Car Rita found a bank that offers a five-year loan at 7% annual interest. If she chooses to take this loan, how expensive of a car can she afford? So for me, this is realistic because I know how much I can afford per month for a car, um, not really how much a car is worth, right? So I need, I just go in when I purchase a car and I tell them, you know what, I can only afford a $450 payment a month. So whatever, whatever car I choose, if you can make the numbers work, I just need a $450 payment a month. And if you go into a car lot and say that when you look at a car that's around that price range, they're like, OK. So if you give them how much you can afford, um, they will work the number so they can sell you the car. Like that's how it is because they make so much commission from selling the car. So this is realistic. You know, you know that you can afford $250 you know, a month for five years. But then how much can she afford, right? So let's look. So the loan uh, formula is going to be P sub zero that equals D times one minus one plus R over K to the negative NT, then NK, sorry, <laughs> all over um, R over K. We do know that the monthly payment is going to be 250. They know that the rate that they're going to get is 7% or 0 0.07. And K, because we assume that it's a monthly payment, we do 12 payments per year. So we do 12. And then N would be a five-year loan. 
Okay, so there's my little appendix, right? So now let's go ahead and find how much of a car she can afford. So P sub zero would be 250, the D, one minus one plus R over K, so 0 0.07 over 12, to the negative N, which is five times K, so 12 power, all over R over K, so 0 0.07 divided by 12. So here, again, for the calculator part, we'll go ahead and make sure there's parentheses around that numerator and denominator. And again, we're not going to do this by hand. We'll go ahead and just put this in the calculator. So let's go ahead and go over to the calculator, and we'll put it in exactly how we see it here. So parentheses 250, parentheses 1 minus parentheses 1 plus 0 0.07 divided by 12, parentheses, and then to the power of negative 5 times 12. And then close the exponent. And then close the 1 minus, and then close the numerator divide by 0 0.07, parenthesis, 0 0.07, divided by 12, and enter. So you should get a value of $12,625.50. If I round to the nearest cent, Right, that's four, nine, eight is the test digit. It's above five, so it'll be 50 cents. So when you purchase a car, you do purchase for the initial DMV fees and um, the title and things like that. So if you're gonna buy a car, you know that some of this amount will go towards that. And it's usually like, for a $250 payment a month, maybe like $1,000, so not very much. So you can afford a, a good chunk of the car price to this. Okay, and then if we want to know the loan's total amount, including interest, what we need to see is even though we got this loan amount, we are paying interest over five years. So Race Car Rita is giving the bank $250 per month, right, for five years. So the first thing we'll have to do is find the total payments. And get $250 per month times 12 months per year times five years. And some of you are really good. You bought a car, so you automatically know, oh, times 60 months, right? So if you're quick like that, that I think that's a good thing. So let, let's just multiply 250 times 12 times 5. So notice she gave $15,000 to the bank, right, in total payments. So if she gave $15,000, but her loan was originally $12,625.50, then the interest that she paid to the bank is a, that difference. So now we can go to part C and then find the interest. And that's essentially taking the total payments so I minus the original amount. So all you do is take 15000 and minus the $12,625.50. Okay, so if we go 15000 Minus, and I'm going to go ahead and just highlight the value up here and hit enter and enter again, and I get $2,374.50. So
So we found the loan amount here, and then we found the total payments for Part B, right, which includes the interest rates Carita's paying, right? Because she did, in those little tiny payments, were uh, totaled of $2,374.50 in, um, in interest that she paid to the bank. So let's go ahead and kind of do the other part, um, which is mortgages, right? So Lazy Daisy purchased a $300,000 house with 10% down and financed the rest at 6% annual interest over 30 years. So it's a usual, it's an unusual high interest rate because that's when the, that's how interest rates used to be. Now interest rates are more controlled over the federal government and they're pretty low, especially right now. It's a good time to buy. So if Lazy Daisy buys a $300 home and puts 10% down, that means that she has saved 10% of that price of that home, right? And she doesn't need to borrow that much money from the bank. She, even though she bought a home for $300,000, it doesn't mean she borrowed that much from the bank because she was able to take some of her own money and put it down as a down payment. So in order to be able to find her mortgage payments every month for 30 years, we actually should need to find the original amount of the loans. Now, the monthly payments we know that are part of the formula, the loan formula, but um, remember that the mortgage payments per month will depend on how much she takes out the loan. And she did not take the loan out for 300000 She took it for 10% less than the 300000 So the first thing we have to do here is find the price of the loan. And how do we do that? Well, there's a couple of ways. We did all those percent problems in chapter one, so there's a few ways we could do it. So the, the loan amount will be the total amount of the home, 300,000, minus 10% of the original amount, 300,000. So if I put this in like a math language, Right, it would be 10% is 0.1 of means times and then 300,000. So if you did this in the calculator, it's a simple calculation, right? Minus 0.1 times 300,000. And so we get 270,000. Now, some of you would have multiplied by 10% first and then subtracted. That's totally fine. This just gives you a chance to do it all in one shot. Okay, so this is one piece. So once you find the price of the loan, now we can go ahead and find the monthly payments. So now we can find monthly payments. So the formula P sub zero is equal to D times one minus a one plus R over K to the negative NK all over R over K. So the P sub zero we know, we know how much the loan is, right? The loan amount is going to be $270,000 because remember she put 10% down. D, we don't know. R, we know. It said it was 6% interest, so or 0 0.06. Or K, which is the monthly payments of 12. There's 12 payments per year. And N, mortgages are usually over 30 years. And you usually try to get fixed because that way the rates don't change with the economy. Okay, so here I'm going to have... 270,000 equal to D times 1 minus 1 plus R over K to the negative NK, which is 0 0.06 over 12 time, uh, to the negative 
30 times 12 all over r over k which is 0 0.06 over 12. Now we did do the payout annuity if we scroll up a little to the previous section we had this little piece here where we could solve for the monthly withdrawals the withdrawal part but since we're using the same formula it allows us to use this same formula for D so you could go ahead and just automatically solve for D by saying well that means that D has to be equal to 270,000 times R over K divided by 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.06 over 12 to the negative 30 times 12. And so remember that this formula D is in the previous section at the end because we're using the same formula as the payout annuity, we can use the same formulas for the loans. And the reason why I mention this is because it makes it a little easier with rounding. We don't want to ever round too soon because then we get error too soon. So let me clear this out. So let's put this in the um, calculator. So I'll put a parenthesis for the numerator, 270,000 times 0 0.06 divided by 12. divided by 1 minus 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12 to the negative 30 times 12. Parenthesis and then close your denominator. So we get a p monthly payment of 1,618 and 79 cents. So the payment, let me go ahead and write it over here. So that payment formula is the same as the payout annuity formula, which is P sub zero times R over K divided by 1 minus 1 plus r over k to the negative nk. So now that we know how much she's paying per month, we can find the total interest that Lazy Daisy is paying, right? Because we can find the total payments and subtract that from the original loan amount and see how much, how much interest we were paying. So let's go ahead and find the total payments. And remember, the total payments is how much Lazy Daisy is paying per month times how many times a year, 12 payments a year for 30 years. And some of you already know that it's 360 months, but use the calculator and round to the nearest cent. So I'm going to take that answer above 17 and I'm going to multiply it by 12 and multiply that by 30. And I get, a, I made, so I didn't make it, <laughs> Lazy Daisy made a total of 582000 $763.11 in mortgage payments throughout the 30 years. Okay, well that means if she, if the house was 300,000 and she put 30,000 down, that means her loan was originally $270, right? But she made these monthly payments of sixteen, eighteen, seventy nine for thirty years every month. That means she gave the bank five hundred and eighty two thousand seven hundred and sixty three dollars and eleven cents. So if her loan was to only two hundred and seventy thousand, why didn't she pay over almost six hundred thousand in payments? 
because that difference is the interest that she gave the bank. So if I want to find the interest, all I have to do is take the total payments and subtract the um, original amount of the loan. So that means 582,763.11 cents minus 270,000 will be the interest. And just wait for it. You're going to cry for Lazy Daisy. <laughs> so let me subtract from that answer 270,000. So the interest that Lazy Daisy paid to the bank during the course of the 30 years was $312,763.11. And some of you who don't really have experience with loans, you're just going to box it and be like, oh, okay, great, done. But wait for it. Think about it. Lazy Daisy paid for a house with $300,000, but she put 10% down. So her loan amount was 270,000, but she gave the bank all this money, which allowed the bank to have 312,000. That means she paid an in interest $50,000 more than her loan. She paid double. And so whatever she borrowed, she also borrowed and had to pay back the bank and then paid another of that amount to interest. And that's just insane. That is free money to the bank. And it's insane how that the interest that Lazy Daisy paid was actually more than the loan that she took out. And so there's just something really wrong with that and kind of unethical in my opinion. And this is one of the reasons why the federal government took over back in the credit crunch in the early 2000s because this was happening all over banks. Banks were doing what they wanted and they were doing highly unethical things like this where overcharging interest, they would make more interest off the loan than the actual original amount of the loan. So now this these kind of situations don't happen but they're pretty close. And instead of it being more than the original loan, it's just, they made it so it's just about the same. So no matter what, the bank is still making a lot of money off of you. But don't forget, on top of her paying back the loan and all this interest, she also in the beginning put $30,000 of her own money in there. So on top of all this other money she's giving them, she also took some money out of her savings to reduce down that loan. So again, knowing these formulas and really understanding how the interest rate is so important and how it affects your monthly payment and how much a down payment can help you reduce the amount of interest that you're paying to the bank. So essentially you should just, when you take out loans or use your credit card, it should be done wisely. Like I don't ever not believe in taking out a loan. You know, I have a loan for my home. I have, um, sometimes I have a loan for my car, but they're short term loans. And I put down as much as I can afford because I'm not, you know, I don't have a room full of money and gold. So I just, I, you know, I see, do my budget. I say, you know, I can put down 3,500 on this car. And they're like, oh, okay. And then I turn in my old car for some price, you know, blue book price. And that reduces my loan amount. And that's a big down payment. But I'm still paying a huge chunk in loan. But then I go to the interest rate. And sometimes you can get good interest rates like as low as no 0% for a few years or 0.9% or 1.9. So I always wait for those holidays like President's Weekend, where I know they're going to lower that interest rate. Um, and then it becomes affordable and the amount of interest I pay is nowhere near the amount of the loan I made. But I do make sure like I do calculate it and kind of think about those things when I'm going to go out and make a large purchase on loan. Of course, the best interest rate ever is the 0% APR <laughs> that I always recommend you look for. All right. 